Hello everyone, it's Ren here. Happy Sunday guys. Welcome to my room. I hope you are doing wonderfully. Uh, today we'll talk a little bit about INFJs avoiding the spotlight. Is that a national sport for INFJs? Is that their favorite activity in existence and why? So if you're interested in, uh, you know, exploring a little bit more of this topic, stick to me. But don't forget that you can get very highly informed by the INFJ. If you get my book, the links are below. The Ecstatic Soul, check it out. Amazon links also to my book, The Infinite Castle. Check it out. Also available on Amazon. Rumor has it the main character is an INFJ. Right? This is a this is actually a novel. You can also support me on my Patreon page, which really really helps. So I thank you dearly, and I thank my supporters. Um. So INFJ is avoiding the spotlight. Um, I think we have verified this empirically ever since we started looking at the INFJ type. Um, and here I'm not just referring to me as a we or we together, myself and yourself uh, as my viewers. I think that ever since the uh, INFJ type has been defined as such, and we've been observing INFJs in real life, including INFJ celebrities, um, we tend to see that they avoid the spotlight. Um, they don't necessarily like to remain completely unknown, you see, but they like to be often in that kind of in-between, which, which is an interesting fact in itself. Now, I should start right off the bat by, um, by saying that, of course, some people could come to me and uh, offer some counter examples. They might say, well, look, Jordan Peterson is clearly not avoiding the spotlight. He's typed as an INFJ. Adolf Hitler was clearly not avoiding the spotlight. And he also is typed as an INFJ. So what do you do with that? Well, it's a simple answer that I will give in a somewhat brutal fashion, just so that I can move on quickly, is to say that um, although I have not uh, made uh, videos on Hitler, I will do it so at some stage. Um, I currently do not believe him to have been an INFJ. And as regards Jordan Peterson, um, I have made several videos um, across the years about him because he's an interesting person to try to analyze. And at no moment, I changed my mind about Peterson. Uh, I have shifted, as some people may know, between ENTP and ENFJ. Um, I'm now leaning towards ENFJ, uh, strongly leaning towards ENFJ. In fact, I lean the same way for Hitler. Um, but I never, you know, swallowed the idea that he could be an INFJ. You can verify that by looking at my previous videos or my various videos on him. So we leave these two aside. They're not real counterexamples, at least not by my reckoning. We find reluctant leaders in high energy history and in our society, we find a lot of INFJs who are, like I said, not necessarily completely in the shadows, unless they're highly introverted, which can happen, but uncomfortable with the complete spotlight. So maybe we could start by looking at why they don't like to be completely in the shadows. Um, well, I mean, I think the reason why they don't like to be completely in the shadows is because INFJs by, by essence, according to the way that they experience life and their consciousness, uh, needs to influence at some level in order to exist and in order to um, surpass the state of alienation that I've explored in The Ecstatic Soul, my, my book, uh, so much. Uh, so as I tirelessly like to repeat, the way out of alienation from the world for INFJs is through uh, engaging with others, activating thereby the FE function and through the FE function, the SE function as well. Uh, it's this kind of schematic description, but this is how I would describe it. Um, now, um, if the, if you like, if the vocation of an INFJ is to bring others around a project, uh, necessarily there's going to be some interaction with others and some level of influence involved there. Um, which is why INFJs don't, you know, if you're completely in the shadows, you're not going to be able to engage others in this way. And I think it's often catastrophic for INFJs not to do that or even attempt it. 
um, because in this way they're almost certain to condemn themselves to alienation and solipsism and everything that comes with it. These are topics, by the way, that I'm exploring in even more detail in the manuscripts of my new book that I'm currently working on. I only just started, I'm still on chapter two, so it's the very beginning and who knows how long it will take, but I'm, I'm exploring these topics in more depth. Hopefully you'll be interested in that. Um, now, unlike, for instance, uh, ENFJs, INFJs, um, you know, they'll see the spotlight. They like a little bit of the light that comes from it. So they'll enjoy being illuminated to some extent so that they're not completely in the dark. But at the same time, they'll rarely ever want to be in the middle. They'll be very uncomfortable about that. And that level of discomfort is not ultimately traceable simply and somewhat uh, simplistically, in fact, to uh, a natural timidity. You know, it's not true that INFJs are always timid. They're often not so timid and quite convinced of their positions. And I lead and the tunnel vision that comes with that can help in this respect. Um, it seems to me ultimately that the reason why INFJs are uncomfortable with being in the spotlight and being at the apex of possible influence um, rather than a sort of targeted kind of influence that uh, ripples through and has waves is that INFJs are, INFJs are uh, fundamentally, fundamentally uncomfortable um, with seduction, um, which perhaps also represents an evolution of my position on, on the subject. You know, I, I have made a video on INFJs and seduction in the past where I discuss how an INFJs could approach seduction. Now, of course, at the time I was speaking specifically of romantic seduction, so the phase where there is an element of seduction in the, in the romantic courting, prior to a relationship, maybe during the relationship. Maybe to some extent everybody goes through this, but this is different from this, the idea that one would relate on a regular basis through the power of seduction. I think INFJs are comfortable with seduction because they see it as something fundamentally rhetorical, they see it as something that's a performance, they see it as something that's you know revolves around acting. They it's something that is fundamentally superficial to them. It's really not digging that deep. And perhaps most crucially, and where it has to be said that here also they differ from ENFJs. Uh, if you like these aspects that I just talked about, often ENFJs are you know no uh, dullards. They they are aware that these are are drawbacks as well. Um, but often someone like an ENFJ will see um, those drawbacks being compensated, amply compensated um, by the, the social capital and the attention and power to influence that they um, accrue as a result. Um, and the, if you like, the causal explanation behind this is that ENFJs not INFJs, but ENFJs are fundamentally comfortable with the idea of having a public personality, which is not their personality. So ENFJs are, seem to be quite good. And again, there's no critique, either positive or negative involved in what I'm saying now, but ENFJs have this ability to, to let their person right, evolve next to their public persona, to some kind of persona that they know is not the real them, but that they are quite happy to develop and quite happy to let itself be expressed. Partly because, or, you know, due to the fact that they care a lot about what others see, say and think. INFJs do as well, but they have a little bit more independence from that compared to ENFJs. They have less than the INFPs, but they have more than ENFJs. So, this idea of this public persona sometimes, of course, gets absorbed into the real person in the case of the ENFJ, where you almost wonder, who is the real person? I mean, how, who, who, you know, if you know the president of France, Emmanuel Macron, I mean, who would be, who would deny that we sometimes wonder if the public persona is just, you know, has melted into the real, real one? You might argue that we say that about all politicians. Either way, INFJs are not comfortable with having these two kind of entities living next to each other, the public and the and the private. And they tend to prefer allowing the real person to uh, be always in full integrity when 
engaging in, in relationships that are of a public nature. Um, so that's essentially why INFJs will ultimately tend to avoid the spotlight. They are uncomfortable about seduction and they're less likely to fall into its pitfalls because they're not as dependent on social consensus and social views uh, for the sake of their self-esteem. The self-esteem of the INFJ is ultimately always going to have to reside in some sort of realization of an NI prescience, an NI vision. If that is not accomplished, if it's sacrificed in the name of a project defined by others, the INFJ's self-esteem will plummet. Okay, so um, ultimately that's why they tend to avoid the spotlight. It, they have some power to have the spotlight, to take the spotlight, and they will do it on rare occasions. And often when they do it, they're quite good at it. But it's not something that for them is existentially uh, of number one priority. And worse than that, sometimes it can be an existential threat. Let me know in the comments what you think, guys, uh, about these thoughts, if you agree or disagree. And uh, don't forget my Patreon page, and I will see you next week. All right, enjoy the rest of your day. Bye-bye.